Hi everyone. So uh, the next topic in the regression section is uh, to talk about centered coordinates. And um, this is kind of about a trick. I mean, the uh, in the regression problem, we have a target variable and we're trying to predict its values by as a linear combination of certain features. And so in my uh, car engine example, we're trying to predict the miles per gallon of a car based on the size of its engine and uh, the weight of the car and its acceleration, for example. And um, one thing that we can do, which can simplify some of the formulas, is to change the measurement scale that we use for the, the, um, for the features. So for example, instead of just using the weight of the car, we can measure instead uh, we can take the average weight of all the cars that we're interested in and we can set that to be zero. And then we can use a measurement which just measures how much bigger than the average value or how much smaller than the average value um, our particular car's weight is. And in some sense, this is a trick, but it turns out that it, it simplifies the formulas quite a bit and also helps us draw connections to some statistical ideas later. So um, let's look at this a little bit more closely. So just to recap, we have our data matrix X, N rows, K plus one columns, last column ones, and um, each uh, row of X is a sample of our whatever our experiment that we're looking at is, and each column is a feature. It's, a, it's the measurement of a particular property. And so the col as you go down the column, you get the measurement of that property for each sample. And what I want to propose doing is to introduce what I'm going to call centered coordinates. And I'm going to change each feature so that the average value of the modified features is zero. And what that means in practice is that I'm going to, I'm going to just change my measurement scale. And so I'm going to, um, have my matrix X, and I'm going to be able to assume that, I guess the only exception here is except for the last one. I mean, this fake feature, I only mean the real features. So um, I'm going to assume that every one of the first K columns of x sums to 0. And you should think of this just as a change of the measurement scale. So as I said, if let's say we looked at the, um, at the car data that we considered before, and instead of measuring just miles per gallon, we would take the average mile per, miles per gallon of all the cars and subtract that so that, um, that, that uh, the column, instead of just measuring miles per gallon, the zero point would be the average value. And it's kind of an arbitrary measure. And as, as I said, partly this is being done to, um, to simplify the, uh, the formulas rather than for any deep mathematical reason. So by doing this, we're going to be able to assume that the, every one of the first k columns of x sums to zero. And now let's see how that changes the least squares problem. So remember that the solution so the least squares problem comes from the equation x transpose y minus xm equals zero, or m equals d inverse x transpose y, where d is the matrix x transpose x. And let's see what happens to d. So I'm going to make a little uh, picture here. So x transpose uh, 
the last column of x is all ones. So in, in x transpose, the last row of x is all ones. And we have k plus one rows here and n columns. And um, here we have the various, let's put this here. Here we have the various um, values of the features which have been tinkered with. And here we're going to have the, um, the transpose entries. And we're going to multiply these things together. And the main thing that I want to point out is that what happens when you look at the entries in D in the last row and column? The entries in D in the last row and column come from taking, say, the first row of the transpose of X and multiplying it times all of these ones. So this entry here in D is the sum of the first row of X transpose or the sum of the first column of X. So it's zero because we've arranged that the columns of X all sum to zero. And that's what's going to happen all the way down this last column of X, except for the very last entry, which is gotten by taking this 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, times the 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And so down here at the bottom, we get just N. And similarly, if we look at the bottom row of D, of D which is X, this is here's X transpose, here's X and here's D. If we look at the very bottom row of D, the bottom row comes from taking this row of ones and taking its dot product against each of the columns of X in succession. And again, we get the sum of the values in the columns of X. So again, we get a bunch of zeros. So the effect of changing our measurement scale so that all of the columns of X sum to zero is that our matrix D, I mean, we don't really know what's going on here. I'm gonna call it D zero is that our matrix D takes on a block form. It has a D0, which is K by K. And if you look at what's going on here, that's what you would get if you didn't add the row of ones. So it's just take your, take date, if we let X0 be the N by K matrix of data without the last column. then D0 is X0 transpose times X0. And then we have zeros in these last column and last row, and then we have this nice N. And uh, so the first thing to notice is that the inverse of D in this situation also has a block form. It's D0 inverse, zero, one over N, zero, and so forth. So, um, you can tell that just by multiplying these two matrices together, the two blocks, the D0 and D inverse, give you ones all the way down the diagonal for the first K entries, and the N times one over N gives you a one at the bottom entry. And the other thing to notice is that if you uh, remember the formula that we were looking at up above, D inverse X transpose Y, now we can work this out. Uh, this was our formula for M we can work this out and we see that, so D inverse looks like D zero inverse zero N zero. And then we have um, X transpose Y. So X transpose has a row of ones across the bottom and then a bunch of X's up here. And then um, Y looks like Y one down to y n, and all I want to focus on is the um, the last entry, because what we get here is um, uh, a bunch of bunch of stuff that we don't know much about here. It's actually x zero transpose times y one up to y n, but the very last entry of this product here is just the sum of the y's. And then when we multiply that, this should be an, invert, an inverse, when we multiply that by D inverse, 
we get that the very last entry of that, which is M, we don't, we got a, whatever it is here, but the very last entry is the sum of yi over n. In other words, mk plus 1, which if you go way back and think about it, is basically the intercept in the linear equation that we were looking at, turns out to be y bar. It's the average value of the y's. And so, um, we have a, um, and let me just remind you that x0 transpose is k by n. So uh, by making the simplification, we, we can actually throw away, we can, we can reduce the problem by one dimension. Namely, we know that by, by arranging for all the columns of x to have mean 0 or some 0, uh, then we know that the intercept mk plus 1 is the average value of the y's, and the other m's, the first, um, the first k m's, can be computed as d0 inverse x0 transpose y. This is m1 down to mk, and mk plus 1 is y bar which is 1 over n times the sum of the yi's. And so in centered coordinates, you don't need, you don't need to introduce the, the column of 1's at the end of your matrix. You can use just x0, which is the matrix just of the data, and um, d0 inverse, which is x0 trans, d0, which is x0 transpose x0, where x0 is the matrix x, but changed so that all the columns have um, mean 0. And then you can just use for your intercept the average value of the y's. You could go even a step farther, and you could change the measurement scale for the y's so that its average value is 0. And then you could forget about the intercept entirely. So um, these are called centered coordinates, and they use the sort of average value of the feature as the zero point for the measurements of each feature.